Just a ration of compassion can change a life, perhaps a life you never before pondered. The eyes of animals have always wondered when will be the end of their misery and suffering. By reaching the hearts and minds of humans, our eyes are made new, discovering. All eyes see the same. Our souls are one in name. All eyes see the same. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I was a vegetarian for 10 years before becoming vegan in 2010. Uh, before becoming vegan, I actively tried to not engage in the media that's out there that exposes animal abuse. So the footage, the undercover investigations, books. Uh, I actively avoided it because I felt that as an individual, I was doing the best that I could for the animals by being a vegetarian. Um, but in 2010, when I became a vegan, uh, there was a confluence of forces that brought me to consider animals in a really serious way. I was exposed to Gary Francione's podcasts and books, uh, Colleen Patrick Boudreau's work, and I did eventually see some uh, undercover investigations. Specifically, one that stood out was a uh, slaughterhouse facility, or I think it was a dairy farm in Ohio. And that investigative footage really jarred me. Uh, in many ways and it really started to make me think about veganism in a serious way. June 1st, 2005, I went vegan the same day I met my dog. I found my dog actually. Um, and the activist, how long have you been? I started when I was in junior year. My uh, professor, she was my mentor, she was an animal rights activist when she was a kid. Yeah. So she's the one that led me to become vegetarian. In shelter medicine yeah. since 2004. I think two of the worst things that I had seen was um, a guy had gotten frustrated with his dog. His dog wouldn't listen to him. Yeah. Um, and what happens is he went to go grab the dog and the dog bit him. Yeah. Uh, grab the dog and then grab the ear and he didn't know, well he might have known. I think ignorance is bliss and BS. But yeah. he ended up grabbing the dog, dog bit him. The dog had a really bad ear infection. So to get back to the dog, he set the dog on fire. Wow. And then another one was a guy had a boy and a girl pit bull. Yes. And the boy didn't want to mate with the female. So instead of, you know, just whatever, giving the dog away, he decided to tie the dog up to the back of his, his motorcycle and drag the dog behind him. That had to be the two bucks one. And those dogs got uh, euthanized, one because one was really burned, and the other one because um, the dog was stir crazy, the dog was healing, and the dog didn't want to be touched, didn't want to be pecked, because he was in pain, and he was unresponsive to people, so they euthanized him. He was a nice dog. People will say that I'm a hypocrite in the sense that, yes, I'm out there, you know, promoting animal awareness yeah, and yeah. speaking out for animal abuse, yeah. you know, and bringing awareness to what's happening in slaughterhouses, etc. But I still consume chicken. So, for me, it's a process. I still have to get past my own thing where, um, I think it's a social thing that I'm a whole social aspect of it because it's summertime right now and there's so many people that enjoy doing barbecues and whenever you do go to someone's home there's always something on the grill. I have to work past that. And primarily when it does come to me eating eating chicken for dinner, 
At this point, it's usually once or twice a week, so it's not yeah. even regularly. But it is, a, for me, it's a social thing. It's, oh, well, you know, if I know if I'm going to go, if I'm going to go to a social event or someone's home for a barbecue, I do need to start bringing my own things. Um, I have to get past my own insecurity, I guess, about that. Just bringing it in. And not feeling like I'm insulting someone. Um, and that's what I, I'm at that point now where I feel like I would be insulting someone if I brought my own stuff. I wanted to show you something. Um, this is this is kind of um, graphic. Here we go. So you could be warned. Just press play. <laughs> Okay, once you talk to someone for an hour and, and show them on videos just like this, why do you think that they, they don't get it? They don't get the point of being vegan and realizing animals are a, are, are a being. Well, I think people uh, learn things in different ways. There's different ways that people get emotionally moved or need to be approached with this information. I, I think. If we have a conversation with a non-vegan, or we show them footage, or what have you, it's going to take them some time to process it. It did for me. It took me some time to process the information. So, I don't think we should look for that immediate response. I think what we should do is try to figure out ways to approach them with where they are, intellectually, spiritually, emotionally, and what are the things that are important to them. People or, usually laugh or they respond with something ignorant, like, oh, I love bacon. Or they'll say something like, oh, I could never be vegan. Or they think it's stupid if we're bread, we were, we were humans, we're supposed to eat meat. And then me being blind, I'm like, well, actually, meat <laughs> was actually a luxury. You know, the cavemen, yeah. when they were hunting, they didn't always have the bison to shoot. They were eating whatever was around, nuts and berries, and meat was occasional. So you end up meeting a lot of people that are very uh, close-minded. My mother is a vegan, and okay. my father is a vegan, okay. and my dog slash son, West, he is also a vegan. Okay. And I, I am pretty sure he's an ethical vegan. Yes, he is. And I think he did that one by choice. So you, you don't have no troubles while eating in table, and you don't see. And I have no problem telling them that I won't sit at a table that's not completely vegan either. You know, we don't have to be apologists in this movie. We're on the right side of a widespread wrong. A long time ago, my mom put uh, butter on something, and she did it knowing, knowing like, yeah. uh, I actually took the whole plate and threw it across the room. Yeah, there was nothing about that joke or that little stunt that I was going to participate in. Yeah, yeah. my grandmother away. used to do that too. My grandma was Puerto Rican. Yeah. She passed away, and she didn't understand the concept. What do you mean you don't eat meat? What do you mean? And she would chop up and the chorizo and stuff like that. Yeah. and. The sassy Jones, she put it in the rice, and I'm like, I can't eat any of that. Mm -hmm. She didn't understand, it's a cultural thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. I have seen this. Yeah. Um, First time you saw that, um, I know you have a dog. How did you feel about that? Um, I actually cried. I, I can't even, I can't imagine, I can't imagine. A, a dog having to be pushed into that kind of crate with so many other animals and there's the fear and the anxiety that would come out of that and the inhumanity that that they're enduring And her quote is, she wrote, Hunting is not a matter of life or death. It's much more important than that. This was about one year ago. Ready to hunt um, Americans today. Ha ha ha. So, so, so that was her quote. And that's the picture there. And in my opinion, with her, it seemed like she was killing for fun. There's nothing fun about killing another being. And she killed exotic animals at that. I don't support that whatsoever. And whether whatever she says it was for or whatever she feels is right, I'm against. She wouldn't be able to convince me otherwise. Yeah. Um, you just don't do that. You, you just, you don't kill a, a white lion or leopard just because it's there. One thing is not a matter yeah. of life and death, it's much more than that. This was about a year ago, ready to hunt American ready to hunt Americans today. Mm -hmm. uh, that now it goes from human. cruelty. Now yeah, you're human. talking about talking about killing humans. Yeah. Like my paper, the correlation between animal cruelty and just this complete absence of empathy and caring for either of the other humans. Yeah. And there's a there's a connection between animal abuse and people abuse. And what stops her from killing a a, a, a poor defenseless animal, poor defenseless a wild lion? What what can say that what she'll do to a human? Yeah. Maybe not hunt them, but maybe she might do something even more cruel without a gun. You know, and just Pete, there's a disconnect. You draw the parallels between animals and people human people. You soon start to see that some of the things that we justify with animals don't make any ethical sense because we wouldn't apply the same logic to human beings. So we say we love animals, but our only relationship to animals is how we in how we use them. So if I say I love my wife, I don't want to I don't want to use my wife, right? No, yeah. I want us to have a mutual love for each other and yeah. nurture, nurturing for each other. If I say I love my, my father, right, or my father loves me, I don't want him to use me, right? I love my grandmother, my grandmother loves me. I don't want us to use each other. So when we say I love cows, you know, and then you're, you're eating a cheese pizza, it doesn't make any ethical sense. There's a disconnect, right? And so that's what you really need to start to think about. You need to start to think about it. it doesn't matter how you treat animals. This is this becomes the conversation in society these days. You know, you see undercover investigations and we go, oh, look how Butterball is treating their chickens. I boycott yeah. Butterball. Yeah. That's not the point. The point is, is that we're not supposed to be using chickens at all. It doesn't matter how well we treat them. You know, animals are taken from their homes, whether their homes be a farm or, you know, a facility and they're taken to other facilities to be killed so you could say it's something similar to a holocaust um, but again I think that's lack of education with the public so until there's more of an education and more of an awareness I don't think anything could be changed what we do to animals is oppression and so there are many parallels one can come up with I mean is it slavery you take out the 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 um, 
widely understood version of slavery, then yes, it is slavery. We are enslaving animals. We oppress animals. Is it a genocide? I mean, if you look at death in terms of numbers, then yes, it's a genocide. Well, how they're doing it right now is you have a three, it's a kind of like a three strike law. So if you do three small things, like you kick a cat, you neglected a cat, and then you do something else, then after three, then you may be able to move up to a felony. But the problem is there's what's, what, what's cruel to one person may not be cruel to somebody else. And I don't think it's really going to help because people aren't being held accountable for what they're really being, what's being done. And it's kind of, okay, you pay $1,000 and you go to jail for a month or a few days. Yeah. And it's not really doing anything because more people need to know what's going on and what really happened. And they should be listed anyhow, not as a felony, but they do have, they did do this, they did do that, so that they do have a record. Yeah. And then after three, something serious should happen. I think it'll help in some degree, but I don't, I really don't feel that punishment for animal abusers is harsh enough. But I could say that same thing for child abuse. I don't feel that the same thing is, you know, the punishment is harsh enough. So until there's more and more people that feel that animals are beings and deserve our respect, I don't think that there will be enough done um, to help protect animal rights. You know, um, if I scold my dog for doing something bad, she understands that she's being reprimanded for something. She doesn't understand for what. So I can't beat her for her not understanding what what she's being what she did wrong. You know, if someone blatantly did something to kill an animal for no reason, yes, I feel that they should be punished because if you kill a person, you're going to be punished. They are still a being. Our society uh, villainizes animal rights activists. And the reason they do that is because they're fundamentally, our society fundamentally doesn't understand uh, how vegans and animal rights activists are trying to push us towards considering animals. The idea is to consider animals as people, but they are not people. Under the law and in the prevailing ethos of our society, they are property. They are things to be commodified. And so when uh, you know, an investigator goes into a slaughterhouse and they take footage, there's an uproar because someone is tampering with a company's property. But that's the whole point. They're not property, they're people. Yeah. They're individuals, they're not ingredients, right? And so when animal rights activists take any kind of action whatsoever to awaken the consciousness of our society, yes, many times it will break laws because these laws do not reflect the ethics that should be going on here. They reflect an old paradigm uh, that needs to be done away with. So for me personally, it's just, this is the last, the last part of my journey in becoming even just a vegetarian at this point. Yeah. So. I believe you would, you would do it. Can I give up? dairy completely I don't know I'm a Wisconsin boy I do love my cheese so I don't know if I could ever give that up but I will do my best by going vegan you are directly helping your own health you will revolutionize or you'll participate in a revolution of the healthcare system we can cure and solve world hunger veganism is a panacea for many of the world's woes it is not an isolated issue. And if you care about your health, you care about your spiritual well-being, you care about being a non-violent person that, that is caring for the earth, the environment, the animals, yourself, each other, your fellow human beings, if you take that seriously, going vegan is your only course of action. We have to look beyond what's accepted as normal by society. We have to examine our morals and acknowledge the suffering of innocent animals. They are meant to live their lives free, not kept chained from the outside world, locked in small cages, without seeing sunlight, unable to touch and smell the green grass. We are disconnected, 
from the everyday reality of our fellow sentient beings. Be aware and notice the world around you. Sometimes the truth scares people, but that moment of truth will come to you the first time you see and hear animals screaming inside the walls of a slaughterhouse just before getting killed. It's disturbing to accept reality, but you can help change that reality by going vegan and refusing to contribute to the suffering and deaths of animals. Finding an enclave where you're accepted and where everybody else sees that we're doing it. Why? For health reasons, for moral reasons, because it's no longer necessary. Because the pharmaceutical industry is trying to kill us. Because we get sick, they keep us sick so that we keep going to them. And it's a matter of more people need to get back to planet Earth yeah. and figure out that we need to start doing more things holistically and in more natural ways because unfortunately we're destroying each other. And I think that, you know, Going vegan, I think, is the only one way that we can show individually and as a group that we give a damn and that we actually do want to change the world. And there's a reason why we're doing it. We're not doing it for a fad. We're doing it because it needs to be done. That people are dying left and right because of what's happening to these animals and being injected into these animals. And I think that just more people just need to be aware. It's not like it was 1990. We're in 2014. You go onto Facebook. The videos are there. The facts are there. So there's no longer an excuse. You actually yeah. give a damn about animals, then do something about it. Don't go on a high horse and say that you love animals when that actually means a translation like cats and dogs. Animals are animals. We're animals too. Yeah. So if you can eat a cow and you can have a disconnect and not see it, uh, to you it's just a cow. To me it's a friend. Mm -hmm. It's a, a creature. It's something that has a soul. It's something that has a life. And for us to take it for greed, I don't think it's fine. It's not right. And I think that we need, as a, as a world, we need to get back to becoming healthier and, and getting to know our, our fellow humans and mm. fixing what we did. We fucked up this world and we're going to keep doing it mm. if we keep going in the path that we're going. Our cause, the animal rights cause, does not need uh, a lot of money. It does not need government. It does, need, does not need the law. All it needs is individual people taking a stand and saying enough is enough. We will change the laws. We will change the government. They're here to serve us, right? And so when we make a decision to cut off the demand for these products, there is no supply. And when we tell them that an abuse of an animal uh, is the very use of them, the laws will follow us. The laws will follow us government will follow us. We don't need them. We never have. And no social justice movement has ever needed them either.